My name is Vivian Neville Santos. I'm a township um, resident. I came to this country when I was 11. No English whatsoever. I didn't even know you guys existed. And I came here with my siblings. And my parents worked two full time. I didn't know who my mom was from the ages of 11 to 17. Because both my parents had to work two full time jobs in order to maintain our family. I got married. I went through the school system. <coughs> Really high St. Morrison High School, great, went to college, college was in Elizabeth, didn't leave here yet. <laughs> got married, had two girls, had them in the school system, had to get them out of the school system <coughs> because they were being called names. I know the teacher couldn't state the names that they were being called, but this year, my 13-year-old daughter was told, how is your mother going to pay for the wall? <coughs> She comes home crying from school, telling me, Mommy, am I black and what did I do? My parents came to this country for a better future for me and my sisters. I have a sister that went to Desert Storm. I have a brother that served in the police department in the town. We are a law-abiding citizen. And I am asking, please, for a fair and welcoming committee and resolution. We need to find other means. I understand the law. Trust me, our brother, I understand the law. However, I also work at the soup kitchen, and I see the children that are coming up. I see the fear. They were born in this country. Removing their parents is going to put them into the system. Who's going to pay for that? We're trying to band-aid a problem. We can't band-aid it. We have to be able to solve the problem for all of us to live together in community. If they have to pay a fine, pay a fine, but that's not for us to choose. That's for the laws. And unless we are welcoming, we are creating this world of fear. My oldest daughter, I'm very proud of her, 15 years old, earned a full scholarship to go to Concord Academy. My second daughter, I had to take care of the public school system and put it in a Catholic school system so she could be protected. And even then, she's coming home with BS about her age, about her race. Yes, every day when I wake up, I know I'm a woman, I know I'm a minority, and I know I have an accent. So I have three things going against me. But through education, through my parents pushing me to be the best that I could be, I have been able to raise my kids. And it saddens me that I have to be, on a daily basis, reminding my daughter that she's valuable as a I'm not person. Sure what you said that. that she's valuable as an American, and that she has the right to be here. Thank you. Follow Vivian. I'm Noelle Robinson. I live at 90 Constitution Way, and I'm addressing you as a supporter of the Fair and Welcoming Community Resolution. My remarks are very, very short. Um, I'm a parishioner at St. Peter's, and I've worked in the Vacation Bible School for the past two years with Vivian. Um, many of these children, uh, I have no doubt, have parents who are undocumented. However, their parents clean our homes, do our yard work, these children and their parents need to feel safe and protected when they're in Morris Township. Second, I'm a founding member of RAMP, Refugee Assistance Morris Partners. We're just over a year old, but we've raised enough funds to co-sponsor with Church World Service to Middle Eastern Muslim families that we've located within Morris County towns. Uh, we're hoping to sponsor more families very soon. Although it's unlikely we'll place any families in Morris Township because of the cost of living here, it would be wonderful to say to the families that we're sponsoring that whatever town is to be their new home, this town is a fair and welcoming community. Third, I think back to my childhood in Mendham and my husband's childhood in Chester. When we married, we chose Morris Town and then Morris Township because we wanted a more diverse experience for our children. I think back to our neighbors in Mendham many, many years ago, a lovely family of Indian Sikhs who moved in right next door to my family. They were very fortunate to arrive in a neighborhood 
that welcomed and befriended them, and they became a real integral part of our neighborhood over the years. But I was thinking about when they first arrived, if they and any family that is quote, quote, different, how reassuring it would be for a realtor to be able to say this community is fair and welcoming. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cecile Kemp and I live at 22 Woodruff Road. I'm a retired corporate person and so I have brought a document for you guys. Uh, so can I drop this with you so that you can each have a copy? Good. <laughs> In this document is a copy of a petition inviting the committee to adopt a fair and welcoming resolution that a couple of us have just started to circulate. There's a couple of um, other municipalities resolutions and there is a New Jersey Attorney General directive that I think helps us frame some of our understanding. Um, I'd like to read, read just a portion of this because I've heard some interesting concerns about what a fair and welcoming community would look like. So I'd like to kind of correct that. Um, it says, a welcoming community with strong anti-discrimination policies and privacy protections for all vulnerable communities races, creeds, religions, sexualities, genders, disabilities, regardless of nation or origin, uh, immigration status, marital status, veteran status, or skin tone. A hospitable community that rejects hatred, intolerance, and bullying of any kind. A fair community where its services are available to all, regardless of immigration status, marital or veteran status, uh, nation of origin, or skin tone. A responsible and safe community where local law enforcement serves and protects the community and does not use local funds to enforce federal immigration policies. Um, we are a very diverse community. As I look out my front door over by Morris Museum, my neighbors include a Muslim doctor, a, an Ash Asian uh, business owner, a Jewish lawyer, a a gay couple, a black, an Indian, and a Hispanic family, all of which look to this municipality for many things that contribute to their well-being, protection, and safety. We are fortunate that Norris Township is well thought of and highly rated as a place to live. In neighboring Chatham, the mayor recently spoke of how the community's sense of well-being is a direct contributor to property values in their town. <coughs> that this committee, with its dedication to the people of the community, is a significant factor <coughs> in our high profile. But this position can change, and municipalities and corporations have to continuously and proactively report, uh, protect their reputations and their brands. Ask Toyota about how many years of outstanding uh, ratings can be wiped out by a significant event, and what it's like to claw your way back. Evidence suggests elements in the population have become emboldened to use racial and sexual slurs, harassing statements or actions, shouts to go back to your country, hate symbols, making people feel threatened, to, to name a few. All behaviors that diminish one's sense of well-being and safety. Part of protecting our township values is to proclaim that Morris Township does not abide by such intolerance, hatred, or bullying. Not in our town. And in our township, I see a lot of our local services workers on whom we all depend. Gardeners, landscapers, housekeepers, construction workers, uh, shop and restaurant supporters. For many of them, English is not their first language. We have heard that children, school children are afraid, and that means that their parents are afraid. What would the impact be if many local workers stop showing up at work, the costs in mental well-being, economic output, and in quality of life for many of our residents. We've heard from the committee 
uh, I think even last uh, the, the meeting, we've heard about we follow the law, which of course sounds right. But what does that mean? I know we've looked at some uh, a, 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 an attorney general directive that has language that I think that's relevant, that's very important, that should be shared in our community. I think it's positive language about how our police forces behave. And I think it's very important that we share those kinds of things. So part of a rollout of a fair and welcoming resolution should include clarity on uh, township policies. I am proud of this committee's proactive actions in adopting the stigma-free initiative, and I appreciate the Woodland Avenue signage on the thin blue line showing support for our uh, police officers' mission and in recognition of their service commitment and professionalism dedicated by this particular committee. I stopped there with my granddaughter two days ago and took pictures of that sign. And a fair and welcoming resolution would be in the same proactive spirit as these other value-shaping initiatives. I propose that the committee sponsor a public dialogue with residents providing input on a fair and welcoming resolution, as well as help in a rollout to the community. Thank you for listening. And so my question is, how will the committee move forward with this request? Can, you know, what can we expect for next steps? We'll be discussing that in our comments. Good, thank you. Mr. Chair, thank you.